And welcome back, everybody. You know, here in College Park, realistically, they're calling it a rebuild the confidence and pride year. But down in Blacksburg, Virginia, Hokie Nation is rallying behind Virginia Tech, and they want to make a run at the national title. Realistically, it all starts Monday with a matchup of third-ranked Boise State. The Broncos are good. And in the past, Virginia Tech has always rallied behind its defense. But this year, it's the offense that's getting the attention. Virginia Tech, it is a program built on and renowned for its defense. But this time around, offense, that's right, offense is getting top billing in Blacksburg. I think people do respect this as a, uh, as a scoring threat and can win games for, for the football team as an offensive group. You know, the perimeter play, we have some guys that, that can get the ball to the end zone. And, and I think that it all starts with that quarterback. Senior Tyrod Taylor leads Texas Tech. He's 23 and five as a starter. And he led the ACC in passing efficiency last season with 13 touchdowns and just five interceptions. You know, how many you threw to your team and how many you didn't throw to the other team, that's an important stat. And then I think that you put that with the fact of how many games Tyrod is directly affected uh, winning, helping us win. And, and that's what I say. I mean, he gives you a chance to win. At running back, the Hokies are loaded. Redshirt sophomore Ryan Williams set a tech record last year with 1,655 rushing yards. He also ran for 21 touchdowns. Williams got the call after 2008 star Darren Evans suffered a season-ending knee injury last summer. Evans is now back and ready to go. He got through spring practice. Uh, I think he got some confidence in his knee there. I think this fall he's, he's going to be uh, better than ever. Two years ago, Evans ran for what was then an ACC freshman record, 1,265 yards to go with 11 touchdowns. You got two different style of backs, but you know each one just just as good as the other. So it, it definitely makes it hard hard for us in practice, and it, I'm sure it makes it hard for other defenses as well. I think we got a chance to, you know, for that tailback position to be fresh and be dangerous, you know, on every play. Up first for the Hokies, Boise State at FedEx Field. The Broncos have been giant killers the last few years and are ranked in everybody's top five. Starting the season with a top-notch foe, nothing new for Virginia Tech. Yeah, I liked opening up the season last year with Alabama. I liked it when we opened up with Southern Cal. If he can do it, it's, it's a big step. And, and, and if it doesn't happen, I, I still don't think you're out of the national pitcher. You've taken a hit, but, uh, you know, uh, if you can attend, you know, come back and win, I think you can get back in the national pitcher. The Hokies are once again a top-10 team to start the season. They've yet to claim college football's biggest prize, although they have space for it, ready and waiting. With well, the three years previous that I've been here, I think this is a team that can do it. Um, as overall offense and defense, I think this is uh, the most talented and balanced team that we have since I've been here. The Hokies will try to buck the trend. Tech has lost two straight season openers, both on neutral sites, and Monday's game is at FedEx Field with national championship implications. Since we're in Bird Stadium tonight, I want to take you back through the window of time. When I was a player here, there was a guy by the name of Jerry Fishman who had gone way before us, but was an icon. He was a great player here in the 1960s. And single-handedly, Jerry Fishman put the Maryland Navy rivalry in a 40-year hiatus. Well, I told you this story five years ago, but since Maryland's playing Navy Monday night, let's meet Jerry Fishman once again. There were many memorable plays in the 1964 Maryland Navy game, but the most memorable play wasn't a play at all. It's just an incident in the lure of, of, of football history. The incident came courtesy of a Maryland linebacker named Jerry Fishman. I would uh, think of it uh, as an accomplishment, not as a, something to be ashamed of. Fishman was a tough-as-nails, hard-nosed competitor who took pride in being fierce. I used to hit everybody when I played football. Uh, if my own teammates didn't perform the way I wanted them to, uh, I would just as soon get in a fight with them as someone else on the other team. On the other side of the ball that day was quarterback Roger Stallback, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner. Stallback was Navy's number one weapon and Fishman's number one target. I wanted to hurt him. 
I wanted to hurt everybody I played against. True to his word, Fishman was flagged for rough play more than once. He uh, was was a little bit out of control there. I, if I was a referee, he should have had more penalty. They should have kicked him out of the game, actually. And of course, the the booing and name calling and all of that started coming from the brigade. I just uh, instinctively turned around and flipped him the finger, which incited him even further. That was 1964 now. That's 40 years ago. Sportsmanship still existed. I thought that, uh, what's the big deal? And my mother was at the game. Uh, someone nudged her and said, did you see what he just did? And she said, no, what? He gave the finger to the entire brigade. She said, what's the big deal? He used to do that in high school all the time. Navy and Maryland played the following season. And then that was it for 40 years. So I just think there was an uh, an era of bad feeling as a result of that incident. I think all the, the thing about dropping the game and that being the reason that the series was discontinued was probably not fair. And I really thought, you know, we should we should play them forever after that, you know, to keep playing them. And but I think that was the beginning of the end. There is only one Jerry Fishman. When we come back, another unique individual with high hopes and lofty expectations. That meant a lot for him to say that, you know, maybe 30 years from now, you'll just be hearing a speech from this guy. <laughs>